coming with you as a pastor. I used to, when I would, you know, when I was in Atlanta, when I got on the elevator with my pastor or with my bishop, it wasn't no joking. You couldn't crack jokes. That's how you get common with the people. You should have more respect than to be trying to be your apostle's girlfriend. Isn't it? No. Come on. You're in the military. You, you can't be the sergeant's girlfriend, boyfriend. Come on, you can't be friends. You're in the military. We're the same structure in the ministry. Too many people are loose. Read. Go to the next four page five. Prior to this incident, Second Kings two and three speaks of the sons of the prophets coming and speaking to Elisha. However, not all things shown to a person in the spirit are to be revealed. This was the case with the revelation that Elijah was coming to the end of his days and that something great was about to take place. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Hold on for a second, everybody. Is the phone on, Elder? Is this your phone, right? It's on, even though somebody's trying to get on? Is, somebody, is everybody on the phone line? Okay, very good. All right. Amen. Jennifer, Amen. are you there? Okay. All right. Now listen, those of you that's on the phone line, there's no distance in spirit. What I want you to do, what I want everyone to do is receive. Open your heart to receive. That's how that impartation is going to come to you. Amen? Amen. We're on page five. Read. And the sons of the prophets. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elijah and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold ye your peace. So what is he saying here? In other words, there are going to be times when people around you, God is going to reveal to you what he's doing with the apostle, what he's doing with the prophet. Here they knew that Elijah was going to be taken up. How did they know? They knew because they were seers. A prophet is a seer. So we can't make you a prophet. But the awakening of the Holy Spirit in your life, when you become conscious that the Holy Spirit is the one that speaks through you and the one that gives you the office that you desire to walk in. Before I start walking as a prophet or an, or an apostle, I was in intercessory prayer. After intercessory prayer, God called me to evangelism. That was the office I was walking in. And when I fulfilled that office of evangelism, in 1997, in 1992, God called me to the office of prophet. I told the people, I don't want that. I started crying. And went through difficulty because in the church I was going to, they didn't receive prophets. And so it was four years later in 1997 when God in a dream showed me, he said, you're an apostle. How did he say it? I was standing on a stage. And I was pointing my finger. I am your apostle. I am your apostle. I am your apostle. And that was the night I received of March of 1997 the call of apostles. And God put me with apostles to train. That's an office. What you have to understand in school of the prophets, you can be prophetic and not be a prophet. Because the Holy Spirit carries the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. And so it's the Holy Spirit. The more you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, the more the gifts 
of the Holy Spirit is going to minister through you. And if you want the Holy Spirit to minister to you, through you, you have to make some sacrifices in your life. And one of the things you have to do, you have to fast, and you have to have a consistent prayer life. A consistent prayer life. A, I'm going to say it again, a consistent prayer life. Read. The sons of the prophets, including Elijah, were students of the prophet. So the sons of the prophet, they were students of the prophetic tutors. I'm a tutor. I'm a mentor. You're not a son of a prophet because your daddy is a prophet. You're a son of the prophet because you have prophetic tutors. You have those that mentor you that are prophetic. Remember the story with Elijah and that uh, the woman said, my husband was a prophet, but he left me in debt. So you could be a prophet and be broke. She, this prophet left the, her, her, his wife in debt. And I don't believe that's the will of God for the prophets to die broke. The other thing about the prophetic anointing, when you begin to walk in it because you are seeing, your wealth is going to be attracted. Say, God, I'm attracting my wealth. Come on, say, God, I'm attracting my wealth. Say, I stir up my wealth. Say, wealth, come to me. That's part of the ministry of the prophet. Is the anointing for wealth. But the apostles carry a greater anointing for wealth than the prophets. Because in the New Testament they sold their houses and brought it to the apostles. But that prophetic anointing will awaken you. You'll begin to see new avenues. Open your hands. Open the palms of your hands. Say I receive. I receive. Another level of finances. Another I receive. Level of finances. Another level of increase. Um, tutors and governors. They were not called sons of prophets because their fathers were prophets, but because their instructor were prophets. As they spoke the oracles of the Lord, they guided the nations to remain under the control of Almighty God. Second Kings 3.11 shows that in order to be a son of the prophets, the individual was to have the attitude of a servant. you got to have the attitude of servant. Uh, 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 Elder Hobbs just said it. And, you know, you don't have to do it. Just set it wide and we'll be okay. Bring it close. You know. But listen, listen to what it says. Read that one more time. In order to be a son of the prophets, the individual was to have the attitude of a servant. Have the attitude of servant. Remember there was a season where David said, you know, I wish I had a cool glass of water, and his men broke through the line, got him the water, and then he poured it out. Have the attitude. In other words, your apostle or your prophet or your pastor shouldn't have to tell you what they need all the time. Sometimes you should just go out of your way to do stuff. That's serving. Read. The purpose and function of the prophet will be missed if you do not have a servant's heart, as the prophet is one who functions and operates within the ministry of helps. A lot of people that operate in the ministry of help, people that you see helping, they're always doing something, or let me do this, let me do this. Those are the people that you want around you. Why? Because they know how to serve. You Listen, don't look for people that want to be in the spotlight. The prophets that are here that prophesy, I give them, they have the worst job. They have the toilet ministry. You see? Why? Because your gift can make you think you great. Never think that you're great. 
Because God used you, don't think God can't use somebody else. So God want to awaken that gift in you to be used for His glory. There was a there was a gentleman named Turnell Nelson that used to uh, had the region of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, and he said God didn't show up till he got there. In other words, he said. God needed him to turn around Trinidad and Tobago. And if God had been there before he got there, how come God didn't do what he did when he got there? Because God was working through him. You got to let God work through. It ain't about man or woman. It's about God. And you can't look at your age. You can't look at your sex. You can't look at your... Um, Demean your, 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 uh, where you from and how you was raised. You got to just relax in God. The one that's rejected by the church the most is the one God going to use. And those that's in front right now, they're going to have to take a step back. Because there's some people that's really, really crying out for God's people. Watch this read. Elijah, not overlooking this fact, possessed an attitude of service. 2 Kings 3.11 says, But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elijah, the son of Zephat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. Are you pouring water on your apostles' hands? Are you pouring water on your prophet's hands? Are you pouring water on your pastor's hands? Look for people that don't mind doing little things. Those are the people you want to promote. But, and you give them little things to do because it determines how well they would do the law. Any, anybody can do something big. But can you do something small? Like can you vacuum the floor consistently? Can you make sure the chairs are straight after every service? Can you make sure that the restrooms are consistently clean where where if you are a pastor or a bishop, you don't have or, or you don't have to go in the church cleaning the bathroom because the people that you assigned to do it didn't do it. No, you pull them people and say, listen, this is your assignment. Do your assignment. Stop making excuses. No, I ain't have time. My kids, I don't want to have I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear about your kids. I don't want to hear about you. you ain't have no gas. You had time to go to the club. See, you as a prophet, there is no excuses. God put a demand on the prophet. The prophet can't make excuses. And even though Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. God wouldn't let him excuse him. God, God is not, this is for apostle because I want the Gatorade. You, you understand what happened? What happened when he didn't go to Tarshish, everybody? What happened? Huh? That shows you there. God is not going to accept your excuse. God ain't going to accept you. You can keep making excuses if you want to. And you'll find that same spirit on your children. Always got an excuse. An excuse is nothing but a guarded lie. You trying to protect something that don't matter. If you late because you got up late, say I got up late. If you late because you wanted to stop and get coffee, say I stopped and got coffee. If you late because you wanted to get something to eat, say I stopped and got something to eat. You still making excuses because God has set an assignment. If class start at eight o'clock at, at, at eight o'clock in the morning, you got everything straight so nothing can stop you from being here if you gotta get here at seven. When we have service on Sunday morning, my wife and I, we, we normally get into prayer Friday night, Saturday night, and then Sunday morning I come up here. 
and will lay out at the altar. Then go back home and come back again. I love being in the ministry. I love preparing for, for, for the service. I love God to deal with me and give, a, give me revelation. So the thing that you say, Lord, I renounce the spirit of excuses. God, God's going to hold you accountable. God held Jonah accountable. He prepared a fish for Jonah. He said, okay, you, you want to make excuses? Let me show you how I'm going to deal with you. And you watch. Some of the things in your life that's going wrong is going wrong because you're making excuses. You're trying to get out of doing what God say do. So you go do something else and then all hell break loose over here where you went to do something else. Read. Elijah was noted for his servanthood. God does not make leaders, but servants who become leaders. What does God make? Servants that become leaders. Say it again. God makes servants that become leaders. Isn't that right, Pastor? You are, you're pastoring, so you got to have people that serve you. If people don't serve you, you, know, you ever have somebody come to you, well, God sent me to help you. God ain't sent you to help me. God sent you to me to get help. And then the next thing you know, as soon as you correct them and they got a problem, they out the door. Read. If God has called you to minister, then he has called you to serve. It is through your serving that you will begin to function in the role of leadership. You are the next leaders in the school of the prophets. God is going to use you, and that way when, when Apostle Monica goes out, and she said, okay, you come, you come, you come, you three going to prophesy. It takes the weight off of her. But you got to develop that. She can't do the worship and preach and prophesy. No, God want to raise up teams. And this is the revelation that you got to get. You becoming a part of her team. If God can raise up one person, why can't he raise all of you? That's my philosophy. Music. That's my philosophy. I don't want God to just raise me up. I want God to raise up my team. It takes a team to rent the Cowboy Stadium. It takes a team to rent the Shrine Auditorium. It takes a team to rent a facility. So the pattern has been in church Hire someone to come into your church and preach instead of the pastor raising up people around him that he got to travel the country. I'm trying to travel the country with a team that I raised up because this is what one of my mentors told me. He said, you know, when you came to me, you had the mindset of those that trained you. But now. You have my mindset. So I don't have to worry about you. And that's the, that's the, that's the issue with pastor. The vision of the pastor. Being transferred. To the people. Because it's hot in me. I'm burning up with that vision. But the people can't catch it. With the passion that I have. Read. A servant's heart must precede the ability to lead. When you understand how to receive a man's spirit, you will also understand that training rarely comes by sitting in school. The way leaders were trained in the New Testament was not by going to Paul's seminary or Apollo's academy or Peter's Bible training center. They were trained by going on the road with the man of God. And, that, and that's how you're training. Coming on the road, sitting here, driving, dealing with the traffic, dealing with rearranging your schedule, dealing with rearranging your time, dealing with what's the most important thing in your life. The most important thing in these next six weeks should be School of the Prophets. Nothing should stop you from this. Nothing should stop you. Because the impartation you're going to get Pastor, you're going to be teaching it yourself. These six weeks that you're here with Apostle, 
God is going to put that anointing on you so heavy, you'll be able to teach it in your Bible study classes. And watch the awakening that, that takes place. Read. Traveling with him, watching the way he lived, the way he sleep, and the way he got up. Can you handle my snoring? Can you handle my bad breath in the morning? In other words, when you travel with the man of God or the woman of God, now you see them in their most weakest state. And you have to love them in their weakness just as much as you love them in their strength. You going to love me because I put on a suit? I don't mean nothing. You got to love me when I'm broken. Love me when I have trials. Elijah, when he went to Ahab, he had to go to the brook Kirith and suffer the famine with the people. Except for God fed him with bread and water by the rain. Because the, the river, as the river went down, he knew how drastic the drought had become. It was a monitor of what God was doing. Read. They helped cook his food and made his bed. Their training came through hands-on experience. Hands-on experience. Learn how to set up. Learn how to clean the church. Learn how to do the windows. Learn how to do everything in ministry. Do ever know how to work the altar. You can't work the altar if you ain't no prayer warrior. You can't. Why should you work the altar and you can't even pray during the week? You should be in prayer five days a week, Monday through Friday. You should have an hour of prayer every day. If you ain't into an hour of prayer by now, you don't need to be in ministry. If you can't commit to an hour. I'll, I'll go right there. You gotta, you you gotta dis, you gotta get up in the morning and get into prayer, or you gotta get up at night and get into prayer. Read. In a ministry, the attitude of serving allows more to be learned by watching and observing than merely by feeling. Being filled with information. Too many people want to get information, but they don't want to get the impartation. That's called psychology. With school of the prophets, you deal with the spirit. That's why when Jesus called the apostles, he didn't leave them in charge. He told them to go tarry in Jerusalem so they're filled with the Holy Ghost. Because now, the Holy Ghost becomes their covering. As well as their indwelling. Let's turn the page. Read Many who prepare for ministry only want to gather information. They don't want to walk in the application of their revelations by being with the servants of the Lord. There was a particular man of God who began to tell another man, I want to prepare for ministry. Okay, said the other man, you start Monday. The man came for ministerial training and was told, your ministry is to clean the union." Urinals and toilet bowls of the church. <laughs> the man replied, Listen, I have a degree. I have come to learn ministry. The leader said, Until you learn how to clean where people sit, you will not be able to clean sin out of their lives. This scenario shows that in order to be a true leader, you must have a servant's heart. So people don't have the heart of servant. That's how you have that's how that's how you test people. Are they willing to serve? Not just getting water for the pastor. That don't mean nothing. Come on. It's deeper than that. You know. You you really have to. There's something about serving. That breaks you. It, it, it causes a breaking in your spirit. And you, you can tell. The difference between people that really. Have a servant's heart. And people that do stuff to be seen. Read. When I was a deacon in the house of the Lord, I didn't understand that God was going to call me into ministry. God's purpose for having my various duties in the church was not initially clear to me. 
At various times, I worked on the church tape equipment, served as an usher, and sang in the choir. Although I didn't realize it at the time, I was in training for ministry. In the movie, The Karate Kid, the main character tells his mentor, I want to learn karate. The mentor begins the boy's training by having him wash cars, moving his hands, and specifically prescribe circular motions. Then he has the boy paint a fence, brushing only up and down, again with specifically prescribed hand movements. The karate kid kept saying, but I want to learn karate. He did not realize that as, his, as he served his mentor in these seemingly minimal tasks, he was learning karate. The circular motions used to wash and wax the car were training him to block punches that he would one day face. As he painted the fence up and down, he was learning how to hit and move with his wrist. While completing these jobs, which appeared to be unrelated to karate, he was actually practicing the skills he would need when fighting a karate match, whether he was blocking punches or delivering a blow to his opponent. I am convinced that your past plays a part in your destiny. Look at Jesus, who was a carpenter for the first 30 years of his life. As a carpenter, he pounded nails into wood, knowing that one day he himself will be nailed to a wooden cross. His service as a carpenter was a training for his subsequent ministry. Look at the wonders of God as he called Joseph to be Mary's husband and the earthly father of Jesus. It was Joseph who trained Jesus to be a carpenter. He familiarized Jesus with wood, teaching him how to handle it and how to get the feel of it. During this whole time, Jesus knew that his ultimate destiny was to be nailed to a piece of wood. Wow. That's not powerful. The thing that you work with the most is the thing that will become a part of your ministry. A true prophet of God never says, well, I'm a prophet, so I sit in the church and prophesy. That ain't a true prophet. A true prophet is a servant. You have to learn how to serve. Never get tired of serving. Look at this. I don't usher and I don't work on equipment. Come on. What do you mean you don't usher? What do you mean you don't work on equipment? You have a fun, you cannot be one dimensional. That's you you're saying all you do is prophesy. Well ain't you that's prophesying anyway, it's the Holy Ghost. But you can't be one. You, you need to know how to work the sound system. You need to know how to hook up equipment. You need to know everything about the ministry. Read. In Ezra 5, 1 and 2, we clearly see that a true prophet moves in the health ministry. The prophets discussed in this passage were helping to build the house of God. Then the prophets, Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edom, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judea and Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel, even unto them. Then rose up Jerubbabel, the son of Zetal, and Jeshua, the son of Zodok, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. The prophets were helping them build. The prophets are skilled. You gotta be a skilled prophet. Position. Even when, when we're pastoring, we're we have precision. The Holy Ghost speaking to us as we speak the word. And now what school of the prophets do, school of the prophets it enhance the awakens more the laying on of hands and calling people to the altar and prophesying to the people. You'll begin to see people clearly. Why, God, why are you showing me? Okay, I got a word for him. If God give you a word for that person, you need to drop it on him. Read. A true prophet of God shares the vision of the leadership and likewise has a servant's heart. Shares the vision. Shares the vision, not division. Oh, I'm just here, you know, um, 
because God sent me here to help you. God didn't send you here to help you. You need help. That's why God sent you here. Beware of people. Well, the first thing they say, I'm going to help you. Because the first sign of trouble, they're going to be gone. And sometimes God brings testing to people. Pressing here tonight, you have to press past yourself. You have to press past your obstacles. You have to press past your fear, your doubt, your worry. You have to press past everything. In other words, as a prophet, God begins to deal with you. Don't answer it. As a prophet, God begins to deal with you. And as God begins to deal with you, you begin to be awakened and while you're going to begin to dream. Your dreams becomes intense. Your visions become intense. You'll dream more and more and more and more. We can't use your phone, Elder. Hallelujah. We in the middle of a call. Come on now. We got people online. The true prophet of God shares the vision of the leadership and likewise has a servant's heart. Give these attitudes to a true prophet. Help build the house of the Lord. False prophets destroy God's house. You see that? If you have somebody come into your ministry and they create confusion, and they create confusion, confusion. So what is this? What does it says? It says that a true prophet, a true prophet. Listen to what it says. A true prophet of God shares the vision. A false prophet destroys God's house. There shouldn't be any confusion in your ministry. If you have people in your ministry causing confusion, you have people in your house. They living in your house causing confusion. You need to get them in order. You need to set them in order. Oh, we no, we don't do that here. You can't be afraid of people in your own house. Because the people in your house will hinder your ministry. If you don't believe me, when that boy stole that money and he buried that money in Joshua, Achan, and Ai, it hindered the whole nation. Watch. Let's go down to the bottom. Elijah requested of his mentor. Elijah, we're on page seven. We're on page seven. Read. Um, number one. Questions and answers. Number one. Elijah's request of his mentor Elijah before his departing this world was stop. What what, what did he what did Elijah want? Double portion. Double portion. You cannot work effectively in the vision of the land unless you have what? The spirit of the leader. Correct. The spirit of the leader. Elijah called Elijah what? My father. My father. Right. The reason the students in the school of the prophets were called sons of the prophets was not that their fathers were prophets, but because they were what? Students. Of prophetic tutors and governors. Their instructors were what? Prophets. Everybody online, you on page seven with us? Okay, amen. Um... To be a son of the prophet, number five, you have to have what? The attitude of what? The prophet operate within the help ministry. Elijah's task as a servant to Elijah was to pour water. God does not make leaders. He makes servants. And Right, servants become needed. So you have to put servants there twice. If you are called to ministry, then you are called to 
New Testament leaders were trained primarily by Number 11. In ministry, the attitude of service allows more to be learned by correct watching and observing than by being filled with information. In other words, what he's saying, psychology is not the way to be in ministry. And that's one thing the School of the Prophets will teach you because it's really the ministry of the Holy Ghost. No ministry is, is, is effective without the Holy Ghost. Read. To be... To be a true leader, you must have a servant heart. Right. A true prophet of God will help the house of the Lord. While a false pop prophet will do what? In other words, look for people that create confusion in your life. Not just in your ministry, but in your life. This is a true or false. Samuel was an instructor in School of the Prophets. Elijah was an instructor in School of the Prophets. Elijah asked Elijah for a double portion of... Huh? Right. Let's everybody stand. Amen. No, no, no. Yeah, let's everybody stand. No, 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 just stay where you are. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Elder, I want you to turn the camera off here. And say, Lord, 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 as I have studied, as I studied the, place of training, the place of training, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you that we're in a place, in a place, those of you that are on the phone line, I thank you, I thank you that we're in a place, in a place of training. Holy Spirit, impart it to my life. Turn the music up a little bit. Holy Spirit, impart it to my life. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray for the impartation of this lesson. Say, Lord, let this impartation be sealed in my life. In the name of Jesus, lay your hand on your forehead and say, wait, 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 wait. Say, Father, as I lay my right hand on my forehead, this represents you and the fivefold ministry stirring the anointing in my life. Lay your hand on your head and say, Lord, stir the anointing. I impart it to myself supernaturally. As I have listened, I have received, I receive, I open my heart, my heart is open, Father. Oh, impartation of the Holy Spirit, rest on me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to take just about a five minute break and then we're going to come back. And we're going to do this one lesson, and then we're going to do, we'll start the...